Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman, and in this video we're going to go over the amine preparation. So how do we make amines? That's what this is all about. And as you can see from this list, there's a lot of ways to make amines. And a lot of them is review. So like alkylation, we've talked about before. Nitrile reduction, we've talked about. We've even talked about things like amide reduction briefly. Okay, and then there are new things like reductive amination, Gabrielle synthesis, Hoffman. So there's some new and some old combined together. Now remember, this chapter is all about amines all about amines so so how do you make them how do you react them what properties do they have how do you separate them so on okay so this is the kind of stuff that we've been working on now what I'm going to show you first is this big summary sheet now, I'm going to leave it as is and I recommend that you print this out and you put this to the side as we go through or you keep it on the side right next to you as we go through the different reactions so this is the summary sheet that you really need to know well it tells you everything you need to know in order to solve problems, but it doesn't give you the mechanisms and it doesn't give you maybe the more finer details, which we're going to go over uh, one at a time. Now, here's how it works. So if you have an alcohol halide, like in this case, in this case, in that case, in this case it's called a thalamide, and you react it with something here, so whether it be an ammonia or N3 or NACN and so on, it tells you what the product's going to be, and it also tells you some special instruction, things that you need to know about that reaction. Okay? And so I'm going to go through this one at a time on the next, you know, uh, several pages. And as I do that, I'll dig into the details with you. Okay? And at the end of this whole thing, you'll have this review sheet that will trigger your memory to everything else you need to know so it makes it nice and neat and organized. Okay? All right. So make sure you print this out before you continue. All right, so let's get started. Let's talk about the first one. Let's talk about alkylation. Now, I'm going to go top down from this list. So this is called, I, I didn't write the name of every reaction, but the first one's called alkylation. So with alkylation, this is actually the worst method. Write this down. Worst method to make amines. Because you have no precision. There is no precision. If you want to, let's say, um, precision, I O N. Okay. If you want to, let's say, make a primary amine, you could really never do this with this method. So let's say our goal, the goal, is to make an ethyl amine. Okay, that's the goal. Well, the problem with this reaction is that what we would have to do is take an ethyl bromide and treat it with NH3. And this is an SN2 reaction, so all that's going to happen, <clears throat> excuse me, is that this is going to come in and the BR is going to leave. And we're going to wind up getting an NH2 because you'll lose an H after it comes in. So that's the goal. That, that's what we want to reach. And we have re reached this goal. The problem is that it won't stop here. See, once it comes in, there's nothing stopping it from doing it again. And then even again. So you wind up getting this triethyl amine. So you get a diethyl amine, a triethyl amine, and an ethyl amine. And if our goal is to make ethyl amine, this is not a good way to do it because you can't control this. You cannot stop at the, um, let's say, mono alkylated product. You can't stop there. It's going to keep doing it over and over and over again. So we have this polyalkylation issue, right? So this is polyalkylation. And that's the major issue with this reaction. So if you want to make a polyalkylated amine, then this is great. This is your, this is your way to go. And you're going to see a reaction in the next video when we talk about Hoffman uh, elimination and cope elimination, you're going to learn that actually there are times that you do want to make polyalkylated amines, and this is the way you're going to do it, okay? But this is not good to make other uh, primary amines or secondary amines. It's not a good method, okay? All right. The next one's called the azid reaction, and this allows us to make primary amines. 
So we can do it with precision, with precision. So we don't have to worry about secondary or tertiary amines forming. It won't happen in this reaction. So it's very much the same. It's an SN2 reaction. So we're going to have an RBR. Let's say, again, our goal is to make ethyl amine. Okay, so that's our goal. So the way we could do that is we could take an ethyl bromide and treat it with N3. So N3 is negative, and usually it's sodium. It's NaN3, and I'll show you why in a moment. And what's going to happen is that the N3 is going to come in. And then if we treat it with either one of two things, I'll show you the mechanism after I'm done with this. If I treat this with either LiAlH4 or alcohol, an acid, either way, we get to an NH2. So we get an ethyl amine. So the key here is that it only happens one time. It's an SN2 reaction. So if it's SN2, what does that mean? What, it, what For this semester, what does it mean when it's SN2? Do you know what that means? And I wrote it on the top of this page, actually. Let me show you where it is. Oh, I don't have it here. Um, all right, let me put it in. But actually, the print that you're going to wind up getting for the mega review has it here. SN2, you have to remember, the R group is going to be either methyl, primary, secondary, or allyl. Those are the groups that you want. Um, it's never going to be never vinyl or aryl. Okay, Me meaning never a double bond with a halogen on it. So the Rx can equal a methyl or a primary carbon or a secondary carbon or a carbon next to a double bond or next to a benzene, same thing, benzyl, right? So those are allowed, but not this down here. Okay, so that's what it means for SN2 that we have to remember. So SN2, I'm not going to write it over and over again. We have that definition in that chart that I just showed you. Okay, now this is the reaction right here. This is what's happening as an overview. Here are the details. This is the details of this reaction. And again, you have to somewhat be familiar with the details. Now, one of them I'm not going to bother explaining, and that's going to be the alcohol version. Um, because it, it does something strange at the end. It's a radical type reaction at the end that you don't have to worry about. Um, actually, wait, let, let, me, let me think about that for a minute. Let, let me first start by showing you LiLH4. So what's going to happen is the first thing you need to know is N3. What is N3? N, double bond N, double bond N. It's positive in the middle, and it's negative on both ends because it's two lone pairs. Okay, that's N3. So N3 with an alkyl bromide is going to react together where the nitrogen, one of the nitrogen ends is going to come in and the BR is going to leave. And now we have an N, double bond N, double bond N, positive, negative. Okay? And that's where we're at so far. So the, now that this nitrogen got rid of its extra lone pair, it's now neutral. It not, uh, one, one of the two electrons, right, is in there. So it owns one and the carbon owns the other now. So here it's neutral, right? It only has one lone pair. Now, from here, I want you to remember a big important detail. For this chapter, for amines, its most famous leaving group, its best leaving group is N2 gas. It is very, very exothermic. So N2 is like OTAS or OMS or OTF. It's the best leaving group for nitrogens, just the way oxygen has an OTAS, OTF, OT, um, uh, triflate, tosylate, or mesylate, OMS. Right? So remember how the last semester we said those are great leaving groups. Well, N2 is the great leaving group. So from here, if I was to take, let's say, LiAlH4, and I provided a hydride into that nitrogen, then this can push forward, right? Because that nitrogen is positive, so it needs an electron. And so what we would have is we'd have a single bond N, double bond N minus, and there's an H now right there. So what I did is I forced the hydride into that nitrogen. Remember our goal. Our goal is to get rid of the N2. Well, the way N2 leaves is it has to leave as a triple bond. So this nitrogen with its lone pair is going to push down here, and this is going to get kicked out. So you wind up getting an NH minus, right? Because it has two lone pairs now. Here it has one. But it took the bond, right? It took this yellow bond right here, so now it's got a yellow. Okay? Plus N2, whoops, N2 gas. Becomes a gas. This is an amazing leaving group. So this right here, this process of throwing out an N2 is something you're going to see over and over and over again. 
N2 is very stable. It's N triple bond N. This is a very new, it's neutral. It's...